Hi. Hello. And hello to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, we're so glad you're with us. Yes. Well, do you want to tell them what we will be talking about today? Yes. We'll be talking about sustainable gardening, mm -hmm. which means a lot of things to different people, but we'll go into detail. But first, we have something exciting to share. Yes. Our previous episode, three, about shelter, mm -hmm. when we were in the homeowner's courtyard, we discovered a monarch caterpillar on their milkweed, which was a delightful surprise for us. Right. And when I asked Suzanne, where do you think this caterpillar will go into chrysalis? Do you room, remember what you yes, said? Of course. Okay. It was, it was the choice of two plants or the ledge of the brick wall. Well, guess where it went into chrysalis? Where? The brick wall. <laughs> I love it. So that means it climbed off the plant. Mm -hmm. It climbed up the brick wall that was surrounding the fountain. So if you've seen the episode, you know what we're talking about. And there's a little brick lip and it went into chrysalis right under mm -hmm. that shelter. You might have noticed that both of us used the word so. So. <laughs> a lot. So, we've decided to have a so jar. <laughs> a so jar. And for every time one of us has uh, starts a sentence with so, we have to drop a dollar in. What are we going to do with our dollars? <laughs> I don't know. Probably can't talk about it. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> okay. So. All right. So. <laughs> dollar, please. <laughs> yeah. Drop it in. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, to, we'll see if this works. Yeah, we'll try not to say so so many times. You so and so. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need a five dollar bill, lady. You need to just pay up. <laughs> okay, we'll see. We'll see how how this goes. In today's episode, we're going to talk about sustainability mm -hmm. in the garden. I mean, if you want to have pollinators, you need to be careful about your practices and be sustainable because some of the things that we have just adopted like you know using pesticides and using weed killers mm -hmm. those kinds of chemicals destroy the ecosystem where we want our pollinators to thrive right so we've got some some really good ways that are very easy economical ways to be more sustainable in the garden mm -hmm. today we're going to talk about two of those one of them is composting and the other is mulching yeah and we had a very uh, fun event happen where the king of composting stopped in and yes. paid us a visit. Right. So we're excited to share with you tips that we learned from him. Right. He's got, he shows us ways to compost, mm -hmm. and uh, which is basically using organic materials to create a very rich soil to either feed your vegetable garden or your flower garden. Yes. In and fact, they, th these tips were so great. I cannot wait to implement them for my own garden. I know. I learned so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. yeah, I see some of my vegetables not doing as well as I think they could. Yeah. I think I might have figured out why that is. Oh, okay. So I'm okay. excited to implement his very good tips for us. So let's go visit Leroy in his composting garden. Let's go. So the windrow method is this the standard composting method. So it's very easy to flip when you're in a windrow, you're flipping over and you're just flipping as you go. See low labor, really easy on the back. You're not lifting, you're just turning. It's probably gonna take several months, especially on the asphalt because it's hard to maintain the water. I'm using neighborhood material. We pick up along the street. Mm -hmm. What do you look for? I mean, we use everything. Uh, less waxy leaves are the better. But then we're mixing that with green material, which is all the lawn clippings, which are rare, harder to get. Sometimes I supplement that with uh, alfalfa. But my uh -huh. most productive pile is here in the back. Well, the recipe is supposed to be eight brown material, eight to one. So we're basically composting in place. So we're building up with uh, brown material that we're getting in the local neighborhood with green material, composting that each year and just keep raising that up in a raised bed. We have high rainfall here, so we want things raised up. And then when we're getting ready to plant, we're pretty much just mixing it a little bit. You can use a turning fork or a shovel 
turn it over and then just put the plants in and then heavily mulch on top for weed control. So I was doing the lower stuff here. So yeah. here I'm gonna do the real high active stuff. I'm gonna add more green material here, more cottonseed meal, and then I'm taking the temp, trying to get it above 110 to 130. So I'm getting fast decomposition. So that's what I'm going for here. Now I just had that in this bin. <clears throat> Yeah, I see a lot of green. Yeah, and you can see, I mean, it's working mm -hmm. and you can feel the heat there. So, so, yeah. when do you know, so, so you turn it once a week? This one I'm turning more, at, yeah, three weeks. And when you turn it down, that mean you just dump it all in here? I'm mixing. Okay. This is still cooking. You mm -hmm. can see, of course, the top is going to be dry. But if you'll zoom over here, Farron, mm -hmm. look at this beautiful soil mm. i mean it's, it's black like rich black dirt which is the ultimate goal with composting correct right to create rich black soil yeah and this is so uh, and by rich you mean um dark nutrients it, well such? it's nutrient dense but it's also dark mm -hmm. and and it's it's got a lot of texture look how aerated it is yes i mean it is fluffy mm -hmm. and it's you know it's just it's fabulous plants just thrive in it okay oh i see, see earthworms too i sure do and I you see know earthworms. he's doing a big, big part of this yes okay we just saw a great example of several methods of composting that leroy had mentioned are time honored they are ancient methods done all over the world mm -hmm. so we know they work well and they're economical and they're just so sustainable because they're using materials that are right there in their area. If you're new to composting and feel a little intimidated by all the details, we've got a really great solution for you. It's called a compost tumbler and it's great for smaller gardens or for beginners and it helps you figure out the process in a much smaller setting. Let's take a look. This compost tumbler is perfect for a small garden. It makes me feel better about the kitchen waste, like these blackberries that molded before I had a chance to eat them. And yes, mold is okay in your compost bin, because what do you think is happening in there anyway? Things are decomposing, all kinds of little microorganisms are eating what's in there, so there's gonna be some mold. And that's the whole point, to break it down microorganisms have to start eating it in order to break it down. Yeah. So let's take a look inside. Here you can see it's very dark, kind of dry, so I need to add some green to it. I have kitchen waste that I put in this bin. See, it's got a little carbon filter in the top that's supposed to keep the odors down. And inside I have some lettuce that's already started to decompose and some eggshells that'll add some calcium. So let's go ahead and just toss this in. So we're adding wet green matter to the brown matter that's already in there. And so now you close the top and just start spinning. And this black plastic gets hot in the, in the sun, so that helps bring up the temperature to cook it. Another sustainable practice is mulching. And mulching is where you take an organic material like leaves or pine straw, and you put it around the base of plants or trees. And the reason that we do this that makes it a sustainable practice is that you reduce your need for artificial irrigation mm -hmm. because the mulch holds the moisture in the soil. It also reduces the need for chemical fertilizers because as the leaves or the organic material breaks down, it adds nutrients back into the soil. And a third great thing is that it prevents weeds it, or it helps uh, prohibit weeds. They'll still come up some, but they're much easier to pull because they can't take a firm hold as they could if it were a real dry area. Mulching is a great sustainable practice. So you have people tell me all the time that they have trouble growing grass under their trees. Can we speak to why that's not a problem? Yes. Let's if do. grass isn't growing under trees, probably nature has something else intended for that space. Mm -hmm. Do you know that one of the host plants for a particular butterfly is leaves. Decomposing leaves, that's right. And if we destroy all the leaves, mm -hmm. how does this butterfly lay eggs? Mm -hmm. 
in order to perpetuate as an insect. Mm -hmm. So I would love for us to use different language that suggests that it's not a problem when grass doesn't grow under trees. That's right. And you have some fabulous footage that shows a woodland scape that you've helped create in an area underneath trees where mm -hmm. grass was a, uh, an issue. Right, right. Which I really want us to get away from framing it in those terms. Mm -hmm. But I can't wait for our viewers to see alternatives that just go with the flow of nature. Yeah. Y'all get me? <laughs> Here we have a natural woodland setting in an urban landscape. We have these two mature, magnificent trees, but they drop leaves for two or three months of the year. Now, some people would consider this a problem, but this homeowner thought it was a great opportunity to create an ecosystem right here in the middle of the city. And instead of bagging up the leaves and putting them by the street or burning them, they have incorporated them underneath the oak trees as a mulch. They've also added this native azalea, which is a natural understory plant in the forest and is a beautiful nectar plant when it blooms in the spring. This mulch will keep the, the roots cool in the, in the hot summer and they, it will hold moisture so that the homeowner needs to use less irrigation. And as the oak leaves decompose, they, it will provide nutrients back into the soil to act as a natural organic fertilizer. So, whoa, wait, we <laughs> hope, where's my so jar? <laughs> We hope that our conversation about composting and mulching will help you be more sustainable in your garden. Yeah. And are we actually going to go back and count how many times we said so? <laughs> I don't know. What we need is if you say it more than I say it, you buy lunch next time. Okay. <laughs> if I've said it more than you said it, lunch is on me. Okay. That's a good solution. Maybe. Well, you know how I told you that we got to hurry up and get all of our taping done because we were losing the light? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. 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 It's getting dark. It's getting dark. Guess it's time to close this episode. <laughs> so until next time, good night. <laughs>